Here we go. Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. Chase Senior here with you. Hope all of you are having a fantastic weekend. As part of today's show, going to take your calls to react to this final preseason game against the Houston Texans. Of course, Trey Lance got to play the most that we've seen him so far in this preseason, and he didn't really impress. So, too, did the Niners run defense. They were certainly gashed throughout this game against Houston. So, really, with roster cutdown day coming on Tuesday, where San Francisco and all teams across the NFL have to trim those rosters rosters down to 53 players, so many subject matters that we have to hit on, and so many things that we have to discuss. So I want to open this up to the floor here, live on Colin. If you haven't downloaded the Colin app, make sure you do so right now. The links are available in the comment section and the description of this video. If you're watching us here on YouTube, think Twitter Spaces, but even better, a sports talk radio show right here on the 49ers Report, where you can call in, interact with me, and I can take all of your calls. So with that, chatsports.com slash 49ers call in. Download the app. Let's start to interact with the faithful, the best fan base in all of football. Want to begin our postgame show with this call coming in from Nicholas. And it's pretty funny because Nicholas is a Seahawks fan, but he's been a pretty good sport. A lot of people have given him a lot of slack over time, but he has been a good sport because he's dealt with some of the wrath from the Niner faithful. So let's open up the floor to Nicholas. You're the first caller here on the 49ers report. Make sure you unmute yourself. And what do you got for me, Nick? I hear you. Hey, what up, man? Good to hear from you, man. What's up? Well, I'm going to start off with the performance tonight. Okay. What, what what are your biggest takeaways? What do you have in mind? My biggest takeaway is that offensive line. To be honest, it was pretty bad, even with Trey Lance out there. Yeah. The offensive line, Nick, you make a good point, and I've continued to say this throughout this entire offseason. It's the biggest question mark on this team. And this is a roster that's really been put together well. You look elsewhere on this team, they have depth, they have premier talent, except on the offensive line outside of Trent Williams. And you saw tonight, when Trey Lance dropped back, Trey Lance didn't have any time to throw. And then even when he handed the ball off to try to get the ground game going, any time that Trey Sermon, Jeff Wilson, got the football in their belly, they had nowhere to go because the Houston, Texas defensive line, they were all over it. And that goes to show you the poorest aspect of this Niners offensive line, which continues to be a question. What else you got, Nick? I also like to talk about that QB2 competition. Who do you think should win I it? Think, I think Brock Purdy was pretty good. But as you had stated, he didn't have a line of vision with that interception. Like he had other places to go, but he decided to take his shot and we know what happened. He threw that interception. Yeah, Nick, I appreciate the call. And that's the problem with Brock Purdy. You go back to Iowa State, he had a couple of really good moments. He had a couple of monster performances. He performed well against some elite-level competition. And he had some phenomenal plays that made you say, okay, Brock Purdy, he has a spot in the National Football League. But then in an instant, in the blink of an eye, in the snap of a finger, he would make these ill-advised mistakes that just make you scratch your head. And you're like, Brock, how can you go from being that guy for Iowa State to being a guy who is making high school D2 level mistakes? And that's the problem with Brock Purdy. Ideally, you put him on the practice squad and you hope that he can go through and work out some of these chinks in the armor. But what's interesting is that if the 49ers let him go, I think he might get claimed by another team and they might not be able to bring him back onto the practice squad. Next up on the 49ers Report, going to go to Edelson Gonzalez. You're live on the 49ers Report. Edelson, thanks for joining the show. Appreciate all of your support. What are your biggest takeaways from this game? And tee off with anything that you have for me, Edelson. Chase? Yeah, what's up, Edelson? I'm good, I'm good. What's up, man? Hey, Um. so yeah, I was watching, obviously, the game today. And yeah, like... um. Our offensive line was kind of wobbly um, in the middle. Uh, how I said last time was kind of uh, kind of like really bad in the center. Um, I saw so many defensive line going in, you know, going through the center a lot, and basically that made you know the quarterback just like go side to side and get desperate at where where to throw because you know the defensive line was kind of pressuring a lot. So obviously that made our, our you know, our uh, backup quarterbacks just make bad decisions. And 
and also, you know, um, I guess Kyle Shanahan, I'll say he's kind of smart on whatever he did, even though we lost. Um, I know why the reason he put, you know, uh, the reason he basically didn't, I'll say he didn't care about this game because I guess um, it's just an opinion. I'm not saying it's basically like this, but like it's just a straight opinion that probably um, the reason I guess he just put all the, you know, the players that um, that had concerns. So I guess they, uh, Kyle Shanahan just put them out there to see who's going to take the spots. And um, I said, um, you know, just like the, uh, uh, how can I explain it? Like he just put all the players that basically are in the, uh, on like the, you know, the draft picks that we got this year. So he just put them out there to see who's going to get in the spot and everything. I guess he didn't care about this game a lot, even though we lost, how I said. So, um, so basically he just put them out there to make a, you know, straight decision and see the replay how um, to see the replay of the video of how they how basically they did. But I'll say Jordan Mason is going to make the uh, the roster. Brock Purdy is going to I'll say he's going to be my quarterback number two. And um, I'll say Amanihu did a great job as well. He did that that uh, sack as well. And yeah, so that's why. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just going to say today. Edelson, appreciate the call and appreciate you for explaining and dissecting this game and kind of sharing what you thought happened dur during this football game. So a couple of things I want to hit on with what you talked about. For Kyle Shanahan, I'm live on YouTube throughout this game during our watch party, and it's crazy the overreactions that I see. Bring back Jimmy Garoppolo. Trey Lance sucks. Trey Lance is a bust. Kyle Shanahan is a joke. He's a terrible coach. Do you really think that Kyle Shanahan – is going to call the same plays in this preseason game that he's going to call week one against the Chicago Bears? There's no way. He's not going to unveil and uncover what his game plan and what his tendencies are and the schematic changes or differences that he's going to try it out there in week one with Trey Lance as compared to Jimmy Garoppolo. So you have to kind of temper your overreactions and not go too crazy with it. Lastly, what you said about Jordan Mason. I think that he should make this team. Because any time that he gets his hands on the football, I feel as though it's a positive play. And I see a stark difference between Jordan Mason, a UDFA, and Trey Sermon, a former third-round pick from last year's draft class. Jordan Mason runs with more physicality. He runs with more power. He runs with more decisiveness. He runs with more aggression. He has more burst and explosion. I want him on this team because I actually think that he can become something and I think that Trey Sermon lacks some of those necessary qualities that you need to be a capable and successful running back in this league. And then we go to Brock Purdy and Nate Sudfeld. I'm going Nate Sudfeld right now just because of the experience factor we've seen so far throughout the preseason. Brock Purdy make a couple of these really head-scratching mistakes. And I think that's something that Nate Sudfeld could avoid and not make. Now, while the offense might be boring with Nate Sudfeld, it might be more of a Jimmy Garoppolo type of offense where there's some efficiency and consistency there. Now, I understand Nate Sudfeld threw a pick in this game, and it wasn't the best thrown ball, and it wasn't the best interception out there. I just think the experience factor is something that the Niners coaching staff has in Nate Sudfeld as compared to uh, Brock Purdy. Next up on the 49ers report, my guy, big supporter of everything that we do here on the channel. He's repping the Niners from enemy territory. It is Wet Noodle 187. What's up, Chase? How's it going, man? Good to hear from you. How you doing tonight? Oh, good. I missed the game. I missed everything. <laughs> I was at my son's boxing training match. So, How's he doing We're in the boxing ring, man? Oh, <laughs> he takes a lick in and keeps on ticking. <laughs> that's, that's all you need to do to be a boxer. Well, he's like 13, and he's doing it very well at it. He's That's doing, awesome. I'm really proud of him. Develops mental and physical toughness at a young age. That's something that you can carry with you for the rest of your life. Heck, yeah. He's yeah. right here next to me, so he's like <laughs> like going, look at me, glaring at me, but uh, whatever. <laughs> what do you got about um, the game, Wet Noodle? Uh, um, So, everybody keeps saying about the offensive line. So, like, I'm really worried about that. Is there anything... We can do about that. You think there's anybody in free agency or any surprise cuts that we can pick up or anything? Honestly, not much because offensive linemen who are available 
are available for a reason. And this is when keeping Jimmy Garoppolo on this team has maybe come back to bite San Francisco because in free agency, they had Garoppolo on this roster. He was a part of this cap. He was a part of their financial structure. And they couldn't go out there and sign a better guard. They couldn't go out there and replace Alex Mack. They couldn't upgrade this offensive line with better players who were out there in free agency to start the free agency period, like an Alex Kappa or some of those offensive linemen from the Bucks or other offensive linemen out there to improve this unit. And we knew that outside of Trent Williams, there were major question marks across this entire offensive line. Unfortunately for San Francisco now, you're not going to go after a player who's cut from a different team and expect them to improve this football team all that much because there's a reason why they were either cut or let go by their respective teams. So if this 49ers offensive line is as bad as it's been throughout the preseason, this is something that could cost the Niners wins. This is something that the 49ers should be worried about, and it could cost them success this season because if it affects your ground game, affects the confidence for Trey Lance, his passing ability, and the ground game, like, you're kind of screwed to a certain degree. So, wet noodle to answer your question, not a lot of upgrades out there. Next up on the 49ers report, my guy Drew Lucero. He's always tuned in every single week. Drew, I know you're always bringing the heat, and you're going to bring some smart analysis to the table. So, the pressure is on you, my guy. Well, uh, thanks, Chase. Can you hear me? I got you. All right, buddy. First of all, I wanted to say congratulations on expanding your uh, your net here in the country now that you're covering Philadelphia as well. Thank you, man. Um, that's pretty awesome and well deserved. And Appreciate I hope uh, I hope you get the I hope you get the bag with that. So um, tonight tonight it was a it was a very vanilla offense. Um, there was the play calling was really vanilla, and in the first quarter, um, I noticed that that te- that the Texans were basically selling out eight guys in the box no matter what the Niners were, were, were setting up as a formation. So uh, they're, they, were, they were doing a lot of blitzing. So they, were, they, were, I, I, they weren't playing situational defense. They were, they were kind of just running whatever they wanted to run. So um, worrying about our offensive line right now, that unit, the unit that played tonight, isn't a good unit. But our starting unit, when healthy, is a completely different story. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, my big gripe for the week, though, is uh, Nick Bosa. Uh, George Kittle and Fred Warner not getting the proper love they deserve in the uh, uh, NFL Top 100. So uh, they should have all three of them should have been much higher than they're currently rated. The cool thing though is that we still have Trent Williams um, and Debo Samuel that haven't that hasn't been represented yet. So um, with that being said, Chase, uh, have a great night. You too, Drew. Thanks for the call. And let me first go to the vanilla aspect of the Niners offense tonight, it was very vanilla. And I felt as though they were running a lot of the same action, a lot of the same motion, a lot of the same play action, but still they weren't able to convert on some of those plays. But yes, Kyle Shanahan isn't going to call the same plays in a preseason game, and he's not going to reveal some of the secrets that he has up his sleeve and in store with this new and tinkered with offense with Trey Lance as compared to Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think this offense is going to be a little bit more explosive, but maybe less inconsistent and efficient with Lance as compared to Jimmy G. But you're right in saying that the Niners offense looked really, really vanilla in terms of everything that they were doing. And it's a preseason game. You cannot overreact to a third preseason game. Now, I had expectations. I had excitement. I was really pumped up to see Trey Lance to see what he would be able to do for a quarter and a half and maybe even the entire first half. And unfortunately, we only saw him for, I believe, three or four series. But yeah, look, it's it's disappointing to a certain degree, but you can't overreact. And then to, to what you said about the top 100, I have the utmost respect for George Kittle. I think he's the best all-around tight end in the NFL. But to have him higher than Nick Bosa, sorry, you can't do it. Nick Bosa is a more impactful player, and he changes and alters games more so than George Kittle and any other tight end out there. Now, some of the other players with how they've been ranked, Trent Williams somewhat disrespected, but some of these top 100 rankings, what's interesting, they're voted on by the players, not voted on by media members or other coaches out there. So it's somewhat interesting to see what the players think of these other players and how good and dominant they are. Something to certainly think about with the NFL Top 100. A few more calls that we want to get to. want to go next to L.A. Then next up, we'll go to David and Nicholas. L.A., you're first up, though. What's up? Hi, Chase. How's it going, man? Doing great. How are you? 
Good, good. Thanks for asking. Of course. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, I, I, I just wanted to kind of, you know, brag about I got a, a Trey Lance autograph card, a sports card. I don't know if there's any sports cards collectors out there. There are a lot uh, out there, I just man. Got there's one. no doubt about that. Yeah. That business is booming. There's no question. Oh, 100%. So, yeah, I just got my uh, my autographed uh, Trey Lance card, and I'm ready for the season. But uh, I wanted to also say that, you know, uh, during the season, it's like, you know, you everybody thinks Trey Lance is going to be our quarterback for the next 10 years. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, I was really excited this offseason. And uh, I, I never really – done stuff like this where i go out of my way to go check out or need news on you know any of my teams so this has been an awesome experience this summer and uh i've been loving it so i'm i'm, I'm ready for this season and uh thanks again for everything you guys do and everything you guys do at chat sports of course la and investing in sports cards is a lot like investing in stocks you're betting on the future potential of the stock or the sports card that's what you're doing with Trey Lance. You get that autographed sports card right now, it might not be worth a lot right now, like an up-and-coming business that is public in terms of stocks, but in the future, you're hoping it becomes something. And I still believe that after this performance tonight, Trey Lance can still become something. Two more callers left to get to. First, I want to start off with David. David, you're up on the 49ers Report Live. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? Hey, pretty good. Yeah. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Even better that you hopped on board and joined the show. What's up? Oh yeah, for sure, man. I didn't see the game, but uh, I've been seeing like like what you've been talking about. But like, I'll be ready for the, the next the next game for reals. Not playing around no more, you know. Yeah, for sure. Look, now that the preseason is done, David, now it's time for the regular season. Now it's time to see these schematic changes, the schematic differences. To use Debo Samuel as a wide back, which you will never do in the preseason. You see more from George Kittle. You have Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Fred Warner, all these other players on the defense. When this roster is at full strength, I think they're one of the best rosters in the NFC. Last caller of our show, once again, going to go to the Seahawks fan, Nicholas. If you want to spam FC in the comment section, you can. But either way, what's up, Nicholas? I'm going to add a couple more things. First, okay. I'm going to talk about who's going to lose the rush spot, and then we're going to talk about the 49er hat conundrum. Okay, yeah, real quick. Who do you think's losing a roster spot? Uh, Trey Sherman. It goes along with the offensive line who couldn't get going anywhere like that interior defense was all over him yeah i agree it was a little bit of a problem and then what do you have on the, did you say hats i couldn't hear you yeah i said hat <laughs> oh okay is this a shanna hat debacle uh this is about the 49er hat that i will wear if i lose to the 49ers week two that's right okay what's your updated look at this friendly bet that we have going down i will go from a photo on twitter to a live instagram video call for everyone to see on the live <laughs> live show if there is one in week two okay so you heard it from nicholas i want all of you listening right now to jot it down Make it official, and remember, if the San Francisco 49ers take down that fraudulent team in the Seattle Seahawks in Week 2, the resident Seahawks fan who watches all of our Niners content will rock a Niners hat, and I'll hit him up with a live video message on Instagram during our watch party, and he has to show everybody him, a Seahawks fan, rocking a Niners hat. That's the deal that we have going on, a virtual shake with my boy Nicholas. To all of you who tuned into the show, greatly appreciate it. When the regular season comes around, you can expect more of this from the San Francisco 49ers report. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. Peace. Make sure you subscribe.